Welcome to quantitative aptitude video on problems on trains from careerride.com. Problems on trains are very similar to problems of speed, distance and time. Just like speed, distance and time, 1 to 2 sums are always seen in placement tests, job interviews and all other exams. In today's tutorial, we'll understand the train concepts and see how to easily and quickly solve all the train problems using just the basic formula. Also for practice, careerright.com has 1000 plus practice questions and practice test on quantitative aptitude for you. So let's start with problems on trains. In the earlier videos, we have learnt about speed, distance and time. If you know, if you are familiar with the concepts of speed, distance and time, you, if you know their formulas, then you will understand problems on trains in just 5 minutes. Okay, there is nothing to it, it is very simple, you will understand the entire concept in just 5 minutes. But if you, have not, if you are not comfortable with speed, distance, time, then I would suggest that you take a look at the uh, video published on speed, distance, time. Uh, over here also in like 2 to 3 minutes, I will revise the entire concept of speed distance time right along with the formulas and then we will head on to problem on trains. So initially speed distance time have their own formulas, there are 3 formulas right. Now how to remember these formulas and how and let us understand what exactly these formulas are. So how to remember the formula, just first of all draw a Y. Okay, now out of speed, distance and time, generally in numericals, larger quantities are of distance like 1000 kilometers, 500 kilometers, etc. Time is 1 hour, 2 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours like this. Uh, even speed is 150 kilometers per hour, 200 kilometers per hour like that. But larger quantities or larger numbers are seen of all distances. So always write, write distance at the top, right? Then speed can be here, time can be here. You can even interchange, even this is fine. Right, distance at the top and time over here and speed over here. You can write speed and time anywhere. Okay, so let us go with this. Now, what is the formula for distance? Distance is nothing but speed into time. Time is nothing but distance divided by speed. Distance divided by speed and speed is distance upon time. See how easily a small y helps you remember the formulas accurately in exam. Whenever you go to a paper at the corner, just write this Y, okay? And whenever you have uh, uh, sums related to uh, trains or boats and streams or even speed distance time, you can simply write this Y and solve, uh, get the formulas very, very easily. Now, let us move on to another concept of speed distance time and that is what are the type of sums that may be asked. Now, in speed distance time, the type of sums are either the distance is same or the speed is same or the time is same, right? Or there may be uh, a sum which wants average speed of the entire journey. Only these things are asked when it comes to speed distance time. Now let us move on to problem on trains. Problem on trains are very very similar to the speed distance time concept. There are only three elements or a very three small things which you need to remember. First, you should measure or include the length of the train in distance travelled, okay? So whenever in speed distance time we had the distance, okay, we used to take the distance travelled over 45 kilometers or say 500 meters or anything like that. Now you should include the length of the train in the distance travelled. Secondly, the length of a pole, man or a car, okay? car, man, etc. is always taken as zero. If they have mentioned that the length of the car is this, this, this much meters, then only we should include the length. Otherwise, for all other aspects, length of pole, car, man, etc. has to be taken as zero. We should not consider the length. And the third one is relative speed. What is relative speed? Relative speed means speed of one object in relation to other object. Whenever say a train is travelling at the speed of 40 km per hour. So we are saying 40 km per hour in relation to a stationary object, right? Uh, someone like a person standing on a platform. But when we say relative speed, we are talking about two moving objects. One moving like this and other say is moving in the opposite direction or 
one is moving like this and even the other one is moving in the same direction so this is object 1 this is object 2 this is object 1 this is object 2 so speed of object 1 in relation to object 2 or speed of object 1 in relation to object 2 or speed of uh, object 2 in relation to object 1 when we are trying to find out speed or velocities in relation to other moving objects then we call it as relative speed we will take a look at this concept in detail okay so you just need to remember three concepts for trains that is length of train has to be included in distance traveled length of pole car man etc has to be taken as zero and we have to take relative speed or we might have to find out relative speeds okay now let's take a look at what exactly is relative speed just like we said earlier that generally whenever we are talking about speed of an object we are talking about the speed in relation to a stationary object right this is uh, say a car it is moving uh, in the uh, in this direction at some speed so and if there is some uh, a man is standing over here okay stationary man so uh, that man is not moving when we are talking about normal speed the speed is in relation to a stationary object but say if a car is moving like this and say another car is moving like this in the same direction then the speed of car 1 in relation to speed of uh, in relation to car 2 will be called as relative speed okay relative means in relation to speed of one object in relation to other moving object whenever there are two moving objects we find out relative speed whenever there is only one moving object and one stationary object no need to find out relative speed normal speed is enough two moving objects find relative speed now there are two concepts over here in relative speed and they are very very easy let's see now let us assume that we have a train called as t1 and the train is moving in this direction right then we have another train which is called t2 which is moving in this direction right train 1 is moving at the speed of x kilometers per hour train 2 is moving at the speed of y kilometers per hour okay what will be the relative speed of train t1 with respect to train t2 it is simply given by x plus y now why x plus y i'll tell you from childhood we have uh, learnt a very basic principle what is it it is called opposites attract right attract means what a attract a a means what add so simply add the speeds right attract means attract means a a means add add means simply add the speeds right now other concept is say train t1 is moving in this direction okay and train t2 is moving in this direction that is the same direction t1 is moving with the speed x kilometers per hour t2 is moving with the speed y kilometers per hour then what is the relative what is the speed of train t1 in relation to train t2 simply x minus y y minus y subtraction x and y are moving in the same direction same means s s means subtraction s means subtraction so x minus y see you might have seen that whenever two buses or two bikes are moving uh, when you go out with friends on two bikes okay there are two bikes and when you are trying to drive at the same speed or uh, alongside each other we feel that the uh, our friends are moving very slowly or they are very stationary okay see if you are sitting here with your friend okay the friend is driving over here you are sitting on the back seat and another friend is driving and there's another friend over here on the back seat and whenever you are driving on a road very slowly or when you are going at the same speed almost equal speeds you feel that you both are stationary both the bikes are stationary because in relation to each other the speeds get cancelled that is the reason we subtract it right and again say if your a friend is driving and you are sitting on the back seat and another friend is coming from this side okay in the opposite direction the friend is driving another one is sitting over here the, you both will pass each other very very fast why because the speeds get added so opposite direction add same direction subtract right same direction subtract opposite direction add this is the only thing you need to remember regarding relative speed whenever trains are in opposite direction okay you need to add and whenever trains are in same direction you need to subtract the speeds right 
Now let's move on to sums and let's see how to tackle these sums. Question number one. Two trains with lengths 126 meters and 119 meters respectively are moving towards each other. Their speeds are 12 meters per second and 23 meters per second respectively. What will be the time needed by the trains to cross each other? Now, this is a train, okay, this is train T1 and train T2 is moving towards train T1. Both of the trains are moving. Train T1 is moving at the speed of 12 meters per second. Train T2 is uh, moving at the speed of 23 meters per second, right? Length of T1 is 126 meters. Length of T2 is 119 meters. Now, what did we learn? This is a speed distance time sum. So we need our DST, okay? At the right hand side, we will write this formula. Apart from that, we must include the length of the train, okay? From here onwards, generally, we will consider the length of the train as L. Okay, for everywhere, we'll consider length of the train as L. Okay, then we need to find relative speeds and we need to consider length of the pole or man or a car as zero, but that is not the case over here. We don't have any pole, man or car, so we'll not consider this. Okay, now over here, what they are saying, what is the time needed by trains to cross each other? What does that mean? Train T2 will completely cross train T1. That means if train T1 is over here, okay, train T2's last point, which is there, it will completely cross T1. Also, Train T1's last point will completely cross T2 because they need to cross each other completely. So how much is the distance traveled by train T2? It is nothing but equal to the length of train T1, right? That is 126 meters. And what is the distance traveled by train T1? It is nothing but equal to the uh, distance traveled by T2, okay? So we will simply add, the, so the total distance traveled is nothing but 126 plus 119. No other external distance is given. When two trains are always remember, when two trains are crossing each other and if they ask how much distance is travelled by trains while uh, they cross each other, when they cross each other, always say it is nothing but the addition of the lengths of the train. I will give another example. Say this is a pole and this is the train. Okay. Now this train T, it is passing the pole. So the pole, how much distance does the pole cover from this point till this point, correct? So that is nothing but the length of the train, right? Also, we can look at it this way, that the first point crosses the pole and then the last point crosses the pole in that the entire train crosses the pole and goes over here. So the total distance traveled is L by the train, okay? Now, so here we know what do we want time needed time formula time is time is equal to distance upon speed distance upon speed what is the distance traveled 126 plus 119 now do we know the speed no let's see what the speed is now what they have given is that trains are moving towards each other right one has a speed of 12 meters per second other has 23 meters per second what have we learned when there are two moving objects we consider relative speed so this is say 12 meters per second and this is 23 meters per second. What will be the relative speed x plus y that we have seen opposite add, opposite add. So x plus y that would be 12 plus 23 equal to 35, 35 meters per second. So this would be 5, 6, 4, 3, 4, okay, 245 divided by 35, let's see 7. 5 4s are 20 45 49 that would be that would be equal to 7 seconds so the trains cross each other in just 7 seconds see how easy it was you just need to remember two moving objects find relative speed it is a simple speed distance time sum and you need to consider the length of the train in the distance traveled this uh, these concepts would become more and more clear once you solve further sums let's see question number 2 a train passes a stationary pole in 8 seconds. The train also passes a 200 meter long bridge in 28 seconds. What is the length and the speed of the train? Now since it is a speed distance time sum, we will have our DST written over here. We will also remember that we must include the length of the train in distance travel. Then length of the pole, length of the car, man, etc. has to be 0 and we have to consider relative speed. But relative speed has to be considered whenever there are 2 to 3 moving objects, 2 or more moving objects. Are there any moving objects over here? No, only train is moving. The pole is stationary, bridge is stationary. So, no need to consider relative speed. We will take the normal 
speed okay now over here what they have given there is a train let us say this is the train t now there is a pole over here right this is the pole the train passes the pole what does that mean the pole crosses the entire train that is let us assume that the length of the train is l so how much is the distance traveled by the train or the distance traveled by the pole while crossing each other completely that would be l correct this would be the first case now there is a bridge okay and the train is passing the bridge now the length of the bridge is 200 meters and length of the train is l how much would be when passing a bridge of 200 meters how much would be the distance traveled by the train but obvious 200 meters no wrong it is 200 meters plus it is 200 meters plus length of the train what did, what did we learn okay what did we learn that length of the train has to be included in the distance traveled right always remember this point in cases of trains okay in cases of trains the length of the train has to be included into the distance traveled right so in second case the distance traveled is 200 meters plus l that is the length of the train okay now let's see over here what they what have they given time taken is 8 seconds 28 seconds so time is not same okay now speed distance time we saw that there are four types of sums generally asked one is average speed uh, we don't need average speed over here so no so either distance is same or speed is same or time is same out of that time given for one case is 8 seconds other case is 28 seconds so time is not same then distance in first case distance traveled is l other case it is 200 meters per l so plus l so distance not same so the speed has to be same let's see how speed is same we see that it is the same train and it is it, it is passing the pole as well as the bridge they have not mentioned whether the speed changes or not so the speed has to be same so s equal to s so what will we get what is the formula for speed distance upon time distance upon time where from where we got the formula from r y speed equal to distance upon time right so here distance in first, first case is l distance traveled is l in case of the pole and the time taken is 8 seconds in case of the bridge distance traveled is 200 meters plus l and time taken is 28 seconds right let's solve it what do we get 28 l equal to 1600 plus 8 l 20 l equal to 1600 l equal to 80 meters right so the length of the train is 80 meters then what would be the speed of the train put it into any of the formula you can put it over here also you can put it over here also let's take this one okay speed is nothing but distance upon time distance traveled is, traveled is l length uh, and time taken for the pole is 8 seconds right speed would be what is the length of the train we know 80 divided by 8 that is 10 meters per second why did we take meters per second because the distance l is in meters and time given is in seconds so the speed of the train is 10 meters plus per second see how easy it was there's nothing to it this is very very similar to speed distance time uh, concept and uh, we just need to include the length of the train into the distance traveled you go through if you have not gone through speed distance time go through that video and you will be able to understand these sums uh, pretty much faster okay moving to question number three a train having length 150 meter passes a platform of 550 meter length the time taken for it is 56 seconds in how much time will this train take to pass the platform of 250 meter length again this is similar to the previous sum, uh, sum that is pre, uh, question number two let's solve it let's see how to do it it is a dst we should consider length of the train and length of the platform etc is given okay over here now uh, is it an average speed sum no is the time taken same no we, that we have to find out so uh, right now time taken is not same then is the distance traveled same no because the platform lengths are different so the speed must be same because it is the same train right so we have speed equal to speed speed is nothing but distance upon time that would be distance upon time from where we got this formula from here r d s t r y right in the first case how much is the distance traveled that would be length of the train plus length of the platform right 
we have learned that whatever is the distance traveled we must include the length of the train into it now what is the time taken time taken is 56 seconds in the second case length of the train is 150 and length of the platform is 250 meters and time taken is we do not know we have to find so let us take it as t what do we get 550 600 700 by 56 would be 300 400 by t 7 into 100 7 into 8 this is 4 so we have t equal to 32 seconds right see how easily how quickly we got it in exam if you practice you will be easily able to solve this these kinds of sums in 35 to 40 seconds maximum one minute if there is some complex sum or something like that maximum you will take one minute but on practice with such basic formula and such quick analysis you will be able to solve this sum in just one minute under one minute moving to question number four stations m and n are 276 kilometers apart at the exact same time a train starts from m and other from n towards n and m respectively these trains meet after 12 hours the train traveling from m to n is slower by 14 kilometers per hour in comparison to the other train what is the speed of the slower train now what they are saying is that there are two stations m and n right now as usual this is a speed distance time sum this is very easy if you just draw this line diagram you will very easily understand what is going on what they are saying m and n they are 276 kilometers apart at exact same time a train starts from m say it is t1 and train starts from n say it is t2 they start at the same time okay they both travel for 12 hours right so after 12 hours let us assume that they meet at this point after 12 hours after traveling for 12 hours what does that mean both of them are traveling for the same time period so the time period is same for both case t is same right now what is what have they given that they meet after 12 hours right and the train traveling from m to n this one t1 is 14 kilometers slower okay so that means t2 is 14 kilometers faster than this train so let us assume that speed of t1 is x kilometers per hour that is the train moving from m to n so t2 will be x plus 14 kilometers per hour because it is 14 kilometers per hour faster right this is the speeds right speed for train t1 speed for train t2 we have the speeds we know the time is same now what they have given is that the distance total dis what is the speed of slower train that we have to find out now total distance they have given as 276 kilometers now whenever the two trains meet say at this point they meet distance traveled by the first train plus distance traveled by the second train is nothing but 276 kilometers correct same way that concept we will use over here distance by first train plus distance by second train is nothing but 276 kilometers now what is the distance traveled by first train distance is given by speed into time correct how much is the speed of the first train x what is the time 12 plus okay what is the distance what is the speed of the second train x plus 14 what is the time 12 that would be equal to 276 so we have 12 x plus 12 into x plus 14 equal to 276 let us divide by 12 throughout this gets cancelled and here we get 12 2 are 24 36 23 we'll have 2x plus 14 equal to 23 that would be nothing but 2x equal to 23 minus 14 that would be 9 x would be equal to 4.5 kilometers per hour this is the speed of the slower train see how using common logic or common sense we were able to find the answer just draw this line diagram and we were able to deduce that distance traveled by the first train plus the second train is nothing but the total distance simply put the formulas for, uh, as per the speed distance time and solve the question to get the answer question number five from p and q two trains start moving towards each other at the same time their speeds are 120 km per hour and 100 km per hour respectively. When the two trains meet each other, one train has covered 40 km more than the other train. 
find the distance between p and q now there are again draw a line diagram this is p this is q okay this first one is p a train starts over here t1 other train starts over here t2 speed of say t1 is 120 kilometers per hour right 120 kilometers per hour speed of t2 is say 100 kilometers per hour now what they say is that whenever the two trains meet let us assume that the two trains meet at this point okay when the two trains meet one train has covered 40 kilometers more now let us analyze it by common sense let us assume that the trains are traveling for 1 hour how much distance will t1 cover t1 will cover 120 kilometers right how much distance will t2 cover t2 will cover 100 kilometers because their speed is 120 kilometers per hour and 100 kilometers per hour what is the difference of the distance 20 kilometers that is t1 travels 20 kilometers more correct now let the trains travel for 2 hours not 1 hour but 2 hours t1 will cover how much 120 kilometers plus 120 kilometers that is 240 kilometers t2 will cover how much 100 plus 100 200 kilometers what is the difference between the distances 40 kilometers that means t1 covers 40 kilometers more than t2 that is nothing but our given condition what does that mean the trains meet each other after 2 hours of traveling right they have said that the two trains meet each other each other but they have not given after how many hours see by, by just observation and common logic we found out that after 2 hours the trains meet each other because it is only after 2 hours that the dis, uh, distance covered between the two trains the difference of distance covered is 40 kilometers so if the trains are moving uh, meeting after 2 hours what we have to find distance between p and q let us let the trains meet at this point okay that this point okay the trains meet at this point now p has covered this much distance q has covered this much uh, sorry train t1 has covered this much distance train t2 has covered this much distance this distance plus this distance is nothing but the distance between p and q correct so what we have distance by train t1 plus distance by train t2 is nothing but distance between p and q that is distance pq is that right and what is this distance this is nothing but the distance traveled in 2 hours because they both of the trains meet after 2 hours so at this point t1 is over here t2 is over here so Bo both the trains meet after 2 hours so distance traveled in 2 hours uh, by t1 plus distance traveled in 2 hours by t2 is nothing but the distance between p and q so uh, how to find distance we know our favorite formula d s t distance is speed into time what is the speed for the first train 120 how much time does it travel 2 hours plus what is speed for the second train 100 how much for how much time does it travel again 2 hours that would be distance between p and q this is 240 plus 200 it is 440 kilometers is nothing but the distance between p and q see by common logic and by dst which is speed distance time formulas we were able to solve the sums on trains moving to next question two trains a and b leave kolkata for sikkim at 8 pm and 8 30 pm respectively and run at 90 kilometers per hour and 120 kilometers per hour respectively at what distance from Kolkata will the two trains meet? Again, this is a very easy sum. This is simply a speed distance time sum. We will have DST as usual. And over here, let's draw our line diagram. We have Kolkata over here, right? And the trains leave for Sikkim. They want to reach Sikkim. Okay, this is Sikkim. Now, there is two trains, A and B. A leaves at 8 p.m. B leaves at 8 30 pm okay speed of a is 90 speed of b is 120 let us assume that both the uh, a leaves at 8 pm after half an hour b leaves and both of them meet at say this point over here right before it came at this point they meet here a also comes and b also reaches okay now over here what are the type of sums which we see in speed distance time either uh, speed is same or distance is same or uh, time is same or we have to calculate average speed is there any concept of average speed over here given no so no need to consider it is the time same one starts at 8 pm other starts at 8 30 pm so time is not same is the speed same no is the distance same let's see a starts from here and meets b over here so distance traveled by a is this much right this much b also starts from here and meets a here so distance traveled by b is also this much 
so distance is same so what do we have over here we have d equal to d distance is nothing but speed of a into time of a and this is distance for b speed of b into time of b now do we know the speed of a yes 90 do we know the time of a no we do not know how much time does a take to travel from this point to this point so what do we do let us consider that a takes t hours okay to travel from kolkata to this point right so time taken by a is t hours right speed of b is 120 that we know time taken by b now b starts half an hour late if b is starting half an hour late that means time taken by b must be half an hour less half is nothing but 1 by 2 that is nothing but 0.5 correct so train b which is there it will take half an hour less to reach this point right so what do we get over here 90 t equal to 120 into t minus 0 0.5 this gets cancelled 3 3s are 3 4s are so what do we have let's see we have 3 t equal to 4 t minus 2 so t equal to 2 hours so time taken by a to travel from this distance to this distance is 2 hours that is both the trains meet after uh, a has traveled for 2 hours right so now over here we have to find distance from Kolkata where they meet, right? So, how much distance is travelled by A in 2 hours? Distance would be speed of A into time of A. Speed of A is 90 kilometers per hour. Time travelled by A is 2, 180 kilometers. So, distance is 180 kilometers. So, at this point is 180 kilometers from Kolkata, right? So, from Kolkata at 180 kilometers, both the trains meet each other. A train overtakes two boys who are running at the rate of 8 km per hour and 16 km per hour in the same direction as the train. The train completely passes them in 36 seconds and 40 seconds respectively. What is the length of the train? Again very easy this is our DST we have to remember that we have to consider the length of the train then the length of the boys or man or car or a pole is 0 meters and we have to consider relative speed why do we consider relative speed because objects are moving here the train is passing boys the boys who are running they are not stationary boys since they are moving we have to consider relative speed so we cannot directly take the speed of the train we have to take the speed of the train in relation to the first boy then in second case we have to take the speed of the train in relation to the second boy okay now let's see what are the type of sums in speed distance time there is average speed sum but average speed is not asked so don't consider it is the time same no 36 seconds 40 seconds it's different now is the speed same in the first case the speed of the train in respect to boy 1 would be different and speed of the train uh, with respect to boy 2 would be different so speed is not same distance yes distance is same why whenever you say if this is a train length of the train is say l okay this is the train and this is a boy right so the distance traveled by the train while crossing the boy is nothing but the length of the train same way if there is another boy the same train if it is crossing this boy the length would be nothing but or the distance traveled would be nothing but the length of the train so we have distance equal to distance in both the cases for both the boys the distance traveled by the train is same so what is uh, distance distance is nothing but speed into time here we have seen in our y speed into time so speed in the first case multiplied by time in first case equal to speed in second case multiplied by time in second case now do we know the speed of the train no so let us assume that the speed of the train is s kilometers per hour okay now can we directly take the speed of the train no why because here the boys are also running so we have to consider relative speed so relative speed or the speed relative speed of the train or speed of the train in relation to boy 1 or the first boy is nothing but s minus 8 why s minus 8 let's take a look this is the train this is the first boy they the boy is moving in the same direction as the train same 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 means subtract same means minus same means x minus y so since it is the same direction we subtract the speeds so s minus 8 multiplied by time taken is 36 seconds speed is given in kilometers per hour we have taken kilometers per hour so 
convert these seconds into hours seconds to minutes how do we do it seconds to minutes just divide by 60 we'll get these minutes and these minutes how to convert it into hours again divided by 60 okay once you divide by 60 that 60 would come over here so it would be 36 divided by 60 into 60 second case again speed the second boy is also moving in the same direction so speed has to be subtracted multiplied by time taken 40 seconds seconds into minutes second and minutes into hours this gets cancelled out what do we get 4 into 9 4 into 10 we have 9s minus 72 equal to 10s minus 160 so we'll have s this is 10s okay s would be equal to 88 kilometers per hour this is the speed of the train if this is the speed of the train let us try to find out the length of the train length how to find out length of the train that is nothing but the distance traveled correct we know distance traveled is nothing but the length of the train so length of the train is nothing but distance traveled that is nothing but we can put the value of s in this equation or this equation you can take any one let us take the second one s minus 16 88 minus 16 multiplied by 40 divided by 60 into 60 what do we get over here 62 into 40 divided by 60 into 60 this gets cancelled over here 4 into 15 okay so here what do we have 15 that would be 62 no this would be 72 actually this is not 62 this is 72 72 into 40 divided by 60 by 60 right so 72 divided by 15 into 6 6 12s are so we'll have 12 upon 15 3 4s are 3 5s are this is 0 0.8 kilometers right so the length of the train is 0 0.8 kilometers that is nothing but let's see I, i'll write it here at the center 0 0.8 kilometers that is nothing but 800 meters so the length of the train or the distance traveled is 0 0.8 kilometers or 800 meters moving to next question question number 8 with with stoppage the speed of the train is 36 kilometers per hour however without stoppage it is 40 kilometers per hour find out how many minutes does the train stop per hour now again this is very easy and can be solved by common logic let us say that the train travels for one hour so if it is stopping right how much distance will it travel 36 kilometers right if it is not stopping how much distance will it travel 40 kilometers so what is the difference of the distance 4 kilometers that means because of stopping the train is losing or wasting 4 kilometers now let us see how much actually time does it waste we know it is uh, not going uh, it is lacking lagging behind by 4 kilometers or it is wasting 4 kilometers let us see how much time it is actually wasting we know speed distance time d s t what is the formula for time distance upon speed what is distance 4 kilometers right now speed which speed should we take should we take 40 kilometers per hour or 36 kilometers per hour we must take 40 kilometers per hour for calculating why because wastage is calculated as per according to or in relation to ideal speed right stopping because of stopping the speed becomes 36 kilometers per hour that is not ideal that is not good because we are losing 4 kilometers over here but if we do not stop the speed becomes 40 kilometers per hour that means we will be gaining 4 kilometers we will be on time so that is good thing that is an ideal thing so always whenever we have to calculate wastage or something like that we have to or we have to take out or uh, we have to consider the ideal speed or good speed so we take 4 kilometers divided by 40 kilometers per hour that would be 1 by 10 hour so if 1 hour has 60 minutes 1 upon 10 hour has how many minutes that is nothing but 60 divided by 10 that is 6 minutes that means the train is wasting 6 minutes every hour that is the train stops for 6 minutes every hour see how easy it was just common logic was used and formula dst going to question number 9 there are two trains p and q moving in same direction they are of equal length and cross a stationary pole in 5 seconds and 6 seconds respectively in how much time would they cross each other 
okay again this is a very very easy sum we know it is a speed distance time sum right and since it is a train problem what we must uh, consider length of train then uh, length of the pole must be zero and we must consider relative speed why because we have to find the time taken by them to cross each other and both the trains are moving it is not the time taken to cross the stationary pole it is time taken to cross each other that is moving object so we have to consider relative speed now what we have to find time what is formula for time distance upon speed correct so speed can we take directly no what do we have to consider distance upon relative speed that is relative speed that is the speed of both the trains uh, with respect to each other now let's find distance and let's find speed then divide and let's get the time now distance when there are two trains say this is p and this is q both have same length do we know the length no so let us assume that length of p is l length of q is also l whenever they are moving in same direction so when they cross each other how much is the distance traveled simply length of p plus length of q that is nothing but l plus l that is 2l so this is nothing but the total distance traveled so now we have the value of d now let us find out relative speed now what is the speed for train p how to find out speed is nothing but distance upon time right do we know the distance how to calculate speed now what they have given is that the trains are of equal length and cross a stationary pole in 5 seconds so this is a train p and there is a pole over here right now this train p of length l crosses this pole in just 5 seconds okay so how much is the speed of the uh, train p very simple distance traveled is nothing but length of the train and time taken is 5 seconds same way over here right speed for train p is nothing but distance traveled is l divided by time taken to cross the pole is 5 seconds from this we got the speed of the train p same way speed for the train q would be distance traveled upon time taken distance traveled is l because length is same time taken is 6 seconds so we got both the speeds now what is the relative speed since both of them are moving in the same direction same means minus subtract same means subtract so speed will be sp minus sq you can take sq minus sp also you will just get a negative sign that you need to discard not to consider but let's over here take sp minus sq so what is the relative speed now that would be l upon 5 minus l upon 6 now let us find the time time taken is nothing but 2l that is the total distance upon relative speed l by 5 minus l by 6 that would be 2l upon uh, let's take the LCM as 5 into 6 is 30. Here we have 6L minus 5L that is 2L upon L upon 30. LL gets cancelled. This becomes 60. So here we have 60 seconds as the time for the trains to cross each other. See how easy uh, the sums or problems on trains are. They are nothing but the sums on speed, distance and time. And you just need to consider these three possibilities. Using this, you can easily solve any sum related to problem on trains. Just remember DST and consider the length of the train distance traveled. Length of pole, stationary man, stationary pole, man, car, it should be zero. And consider relative speed for moving objects. For stationary objects, no need to consider relative speed for moving objects consider relative speed with this we come to the end so if you liked the video please give it a like and share it with others you can also leave your comments and suggestions do let us know if you have some topics in mind and we will develop videos on them for you subscribe to our channel and stay updated for more such tutorials